Hi everyone, thanks for this opportunity to tell you about our upcoming book entitled uh, Photographic Guide to Ireland's Freshwater and Riparian Plants. My name is Ronan Matsuna and I'm a research officer for Inland Fisheries Ireland. Uh, this book has been a long time coming and it started out as an internal guide for IFI employees with about 40 common species and a few invasives for ecologists to identify when out in fieldwork. But it has gone, grown significantly since then. So we feel that it's a highly sought after resource. In fact, we know that because since telling people about it, we've had constant questions as to when it could be finished and when it will be available. And although progress has been slow, we've made huge efforts to, um, to, to gather thousands of photographs of plants while on fieldwork. And we'd never have been realistically able to do that in any shorter space of time, given our day jobs. So since the start, we've had our target audience in mind and we aim this book at the non-specialist. And this means that we've tried to keep things a little bit less technical than, for example, the BSB handbooks, BSBI handbooks that would be kind of used by seasoned botanists, experts and vice county recorders. Although we do think that they'll still find it a useful resource because it spans many different plant groups. Since we're obviously not including every species within a specific genus, only the aquatics, it's relatively easier to differentiate between the one or two species that aquatic um, ecologists might encounter. And having said that, large groups like Carex and Potamagetan can be challenging because many or all of them are aquatic. There are lots of books that use uh, botanical drawings, and while these are fantastic, some information we feel would be better conveyed um, through a photographic perspective. So that's sort of our unique selling point here. Finally, this book takes a habitat based approach uh, where the plants are not organized by taxonomy but rather by where the observer finds themselves standing in the aquatic environment. One of the biggest challenges when creating a list of species to include in the book is to know where to draw the line in terms of uh, what's aquatic and what's terrestrial. Therefore, this book is more about species that are found in and close to bodies of water uh, and less about species that might be found in wetlands and marshes. That's why we've attempted, to, that's what we've attempted to do anyway, but naturally some species will always be the subject of, of a bit of a debate. So we categorize uh, species by habitat, and by this we refer to zones within the freshwater environment along the riparian to aquatic continuum. The aim here is that the user with no real skills in taxonomy can identify where they are currently standing and go to that section of the book for a quicker identification. Many plants will have a primary habitat or zone type, but others will be found in a gradient across more than one. And so these, of course, will be listed as well. Joe Caffrey has been the driver of this book for over 10 years now. He's worked as a senior research officer in IFI, working primarily on invasive species control, including a lot of work on invasives like joint hogweed and lagrosiphon major. Ross O'Brien recently got his PhD in hydromorphology and works in IFI as a research officer. And his main area of interest is hydromorphology in rivers and its interaction with aquatic plants. Finally, I got my PhD in UCD back in 2007, where I studied aquatic plants along a nutrient and pollution gradient. And since then, I've worked in IFI as a research officer, working mainly on fish stock assessment and the water framework directive. But I still have a keen interest in plants and will be out and about rummaging in the bushes for them. Usually that's where you'll find me. This work has allowed each of us over the past number of years to take as many photos as possible. And there are also a number of important contributors on this book who are helping us with various different groups, including uh, Joanne Denyer, who's working with us on the bryophytes, Brian Kennedy, who's working on the algae, Killian Roden on the carophytes, John Faulkner on the sedges, and Richard Lanzen, who's helped us with the calitrochies. The content of the book will naturally be split into a, a number of different chapters. Chapter one is a kind of a standard how to use this book. Chapter two will provide background information on the various topics discussed. Uh, for example, things we address in the ecology section, including growth strategy, reproduction, distribution, that sort of thing, and just explaining what each of those terms mean. Um, and then um, chapters three to seven are the profile chapters. Uh, split into riparian, marginal, aquatic plants, and then bryophytes and algae. And then we hope to include also a detailed glossary with diagrams. The exact uh, layout of the chapters mightn't take this format, but that's the gist of kind of the chapter content that we'll have. 
And uh, just in terms of details, the book will be a softback book, uh, approximately 550 pages. Each of the higher plants will get a sort of a double page spread. So with about 200 plus species, that's 400 pages already taken up. And then obviously the different groups, the, the glossary and the other chapters. Um, the size of the book, um, if any of you are familiar with Haslam's British Water Plants, it's a field guide. Um, that's it there, um, set against an A4 sheet of paper just for size. So our book will be roughly that same same size. So it's big enough to so that you can see the photographs clearly, but small enough that you can still bring into the field. And it'll contain high glossy, high quality glossy and full color photographs. And then approximately 1,200 um, uh, photos. In terms of species content, there'll be approximately 205 or higher vascular plants included, split into riparian, marginal and aquatic. And then the aquatic species will be subdivided into floating leaf, floating and submerged species, or free floating and submerged species. Naturally, this will also include a number of sedges, gra grasses and rushes and uh, some invasive species. The, in terms of bryophytes, there are nearly 50 species to be included, and these will include the, the pleurocarps, which are the kind of trailing mosses, acrocarps, the sort of upright uh, short mosses, and then some of the more relevant bog, bog mosses or sphagnum species that you'd associate with water. And then some liverworts, which will be talos, the fleshy kind of liverworts, or the folios, kind of leafy liverworts. Um, so Joanne Denier has compiled a list and she's working up the profiles and uh, we're just sort of in the review phase. Um, so a big thank you to her. Um, we've nearly got the profiles written and are nearly of all the photographs. So our next step is just to do some final edits and approve a layout with the graphic designer. And you can see here a list of the species that we hope to include or the sort of groups we hope to include. Um, as many of you know, the bryophytes can be a difficult group to identify. So in order to main our kind of simplistic approach in the book, we don't go into microscopic features that would require a level of expertise and microscopy, microscopy skills. Instead, we sort of uh, describe the jizz or the jazz of the plant and try to make it easier on the reader. And um, so in this section, we hope to main it, maintain a certain compa compatibility with the rest of the book while approaching this particular group in a way that is more appropriate to them. Brian Kennedy is helping us with the algae section. So we have a bit to go here yet, but are currently compiling a list of profiles at the moment. Again, we're trying to maintain our more simplistic approach. So microscopy will be kept to a minimum. Um, and the aim really is to, is to bring the user closer to identification, maybe of the genus or the group, but they might need further resources to speciate their, their, their specimens. So, we, we don't want to go down to that level of detail that would require something much, much um, broader, a much, much larger book, I'm afraid. Um, the planned list for inclusion is about 30 species or taxon groups, or taxa, um, covering a range of themes from bacterial tufts to those associated with calcareous precipitates or filamentous green algae, red algae, that sort of thing. Um, I should also mention Killian Roden, who's helping us um, with, the, with the caraphytes. So just in terms of the general layout for the higher plants anyway, um, uh, the other groups including the bryophytes and algae are still to be decided in terms of layout, but in terms of the, the higher plants on page one, we include the, the Latin, the common, and where possible the Irish name. We have a distribution map. This is just a placeholder at the moment. Uh, Paul Green is actually helping us with the BSBI up-to-date maps. So they'll replace these ones. But we'll have some um, distribution information to complement those maps. Then we'll have uh, an ecology section, which includes information on where you'd expect to find it, like life strategy, reproduction, dispersal, growth form, local distribution, that kind of stuff. Next, we'll have a not to be confused with section, and this will sort of include information to help differentiate it from other species within the same genus or other ones that you might closely mix it up with. The, under that, we'll have a flowering period and then a main photograph. And then finally, on the first page, we'll have an interesting anecdote, something about the species that's sort of maybe personal to us and our experience or 
sort of an Irish history of the plant, just something of interest, not too technical. Um, on the other page, then we will have the primary zone will be listed. And then certain features that are important to that plant, like leaf, stem, flower, and fruit. And key information when each those will be put in bold. So if, if you want to flip through the book and compare species, the, the most important information should hopefully jump right out at you and make it a little easier. I'll just show you a few um, almost final examples of, of species now, of species profiles. Uh, here we have a riparian species, which includes those that are usually close to, but out of the water or on the most terrestrial situation along a wet to dry gradient. They might be subject to inundation at the highest level of flooding during the winter. Other species would include Philopendula maria, certain horsetails, and some of the knotweeds that are known to live um, on riparian corridors along certain rivers in Ireland. This, uh, in this example of Angelica sylvestris, we highlight features on page two, including leaf stem, the inflorescent arranged in um, inflorescence, which is arranged in an umbel in this situation, and fruits. This next example is one of a marginal species, and these species are located at the water's edge and are subject to frequent exposure and inundation. So you might describe them as having one foot in the water and one, one out. Other examples include certain Carex species, Oenante, Nasturtium, and Menta. And in the example here, Plantae, uh, Lysma plantago aquatica, we focus the reader on features including the leaf, stem, inflorescence, and fruits. And finally, this is an example of an aquatic species. Uh, we split the aquatic species into three different groups. So the free floating, uh, the, the, sorry, the floating leaf species including plants like water lilies. These are species attached to the bottom, but they have long um, petioles that link to the leaves that which float on the water surface. We have the free floating species then, of which there are relatively few in Ireland, and these would include the likes of Lemna and Utricularia. And these are usually, um, uh, and then the submerged species, sorry, which are usually below the water surface, except for maybe the flower, or more of the plant in times of extreme drought and low water. In this example of an aquatic, we have Hippurus vulgaris, which we classify as submerged. And we highlight features including the leaf, the flowering stem in this situation, inflorescence and fruit. So um, thank you all for listening. Um, I just want to thank Paul Green and the BSBI for this opportunity and for their help. All of our contributors, IFI and Invest Biosecurity, and everybody who's helped us in the Botanic Gardens or have supplied photographs to us over the years. Um, and anyone I might have forgotten, my email address is at the bottom, uh, Rona Matson at fisheriesireland.ie, if anybody wants to contact me. And then just finally, just to be selfish for a minute, if, if anyone out there can help us with some photos for Apium inundatum, Calitrici hermaphroditica, Hydrilla verticiliata, Nias flexilis, or Utricularia minor, That'd be great. There's, we're just a little lacking in that area at the moment. So thanks a million. And if anyone has any questions, I'd be delighted to answer them.